What's going on guys? Tyson Anderson, Mr. Hammerdown. Listen guys, why is confirmation so important in the working dog? Let's dig into it. First guys, let me also ask or thank all of you guys for your followership and your subscriptions. Listen guys, if you would be so kind, make sure you smash that subscribe button guys. Let's get up to a thousand. Listen, here we have it. I call the Clydesdale um, <laughs> effect, right? In the working dog, there are two different types of dogs. There are those that are built for speed and there are, there are those that are built, uh, built for power or, you know, that that intense combusting, you know, uh, busting through the briars and, 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 and bulldozing. But most of the time, they're not going to have a whole lot of foot speed, right? You got those medium speed dogs that, uh, you know, are used to, and I'm not going to throw any lines out there, but there are those medium speed dogs that are used to busting through the briars and just rop, 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 you know, they just run about a five or six speed, you know, they just get the job done, they're bow-legged or wide-gated in the front, thick bone like this uh, uh, visual prop right here of this Clydesdale with this kind farmer holding uh, onto the rein, right, or into the bit, um, and, and, and in that, you're not going to get a lot of power, you're not going to get a lot of foot, but you and I and all of us that breed, buy, whatever, we are the uh, uh, gatekeepers, excuse me, we are the gatekeepers on what's to come, so, and, and what is, and if you want to have a type of dog that you can hunt with all day, all night, the next day, the next week, listen, you've got to build that dog or have that dog built um, to do so. Now, these horses, hey, they're meant to work all day. You know, they're not the fastest horses. They can probably get away from an intruder or someone try, something trying to uh, attack and eat their, their backside. <laughs> but they, they're not, uh, they're not going to go and win the Kentucky Derby, okay? So keep that in mind. Uh, that is the Clydesdale effect. Uh, you know, strong, powerful, low gear ratio type of, you know, uh, get the job done workaholic but nothing that you're going to be able to you know go and win uh the 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 marathon with or, or excuse me the kentucky derby with you know you're not going to just go and and, and, and do a, a thousand mile uh dash with these with these type of uh dogs built like this and i tell you i'll tell you why it is so important to have um, a, a dog, if you want that kind of speed or upper medium or upper medium fast type of speed dog, you know, or, or faster, if you want that kind of speed, you need to pay attention to the gate, okay? Got to pay attention to that gate because it's going to tell you everything you want to know. Now, here's another type of horse uh, or, or worker um, that I like to go to and I like to breed for, and that's more of that Tennessee Walker um, close gated type of individual. I'm looking more for this kind of hound uh, personally. You know, that's my preference. Your prerogative is your prerogative. If you, you know, deem a wide chested, big bone structured dog to be what you want, hey, read that. Go forward, you know, in, in that. But do know, you know, you can't go and think you're going to take a five or six speed, big boned, wide chested or, or, or wide gated, um, a broad gated, excuse me, dog and go win the AKC Large Pack National Championship. It's just not going to happen. It's not even humanly possible, right? Um, the confirmation is so important in, in a working dog and it's, it's, it's so important because of the work that that dog is assigned to to uh, carry out and, and it's so important that we match up that same type of um, working build B-U-I-L-D with the working skill and uh, I'm not trying to riddle and rhyme it's, it's really the truth um, like I said again you're not going to take a, ten a Tennessee Walker 
and plow fields all day. Not saying they can't do it, but it's not going to be as efficient and effective as that of the Clydesdale. You're not going to take a Clydesdale and go win the Kentucky Derby. It's just not going to be as efficient, efficient or effective. So why am I saying this? Why do I sound like a broken record? Because I want to make sure that we get this or that, you know, you hear it. Some people don't know it. Some people haven't heard it. Some people don't get it. And I, I can't, can't assume that you are getting it. I can't assume that you are picking up what I'm putting down. So I had to put it down several times repetitiously hoping that you will um, when you set up a worker whether you're on a job or whatever it is that you're doing right let's say a job you, you know you just started you're in a warehouse you're in a chicken farm whatever it is you're doing they give you the essential tools in the midst of that probationary period to see if you grasp a, a, a hold to the concepts right and the, the, the uh, working or workmen's guidelines and infrastructures that have been laid down before you to make sure that the job or the tasks at hand that are required of you are carried out appropriately, effectively, um, and, and, and in the right time, uh, you know, frame, all right? I like a dog like this one right here. Uh, this is field champion Windy Ridge Showboat being held by Mr. John Otruba of Full Count Beagles, uh, the gentleman that had National Large Pack Champion and Field Champion Woodstock Grampy. Grampy was a thicker built, broad dog, broad built dog, or broader built dog, but he, in time and bred to the right dogs, threw dogs like New York Nick, who threw this female right here, Windy Ridge Raven, I mean, Windy Ridge uh, Showboat. Okay, um, when you look at her build, she's built to promote power. She's built to promote strength, endurance, longevity, all of those things. You can run this dog, or you could have ran her. She's deceased. You could have ran her all day, all night, you know, every week. It didn't matter because that that long body, those long legs, that those tight feet are there to do so. You know, and, and when you better set dogs up to carry out whatever, you know, uh, workers' um, workload that you set before them, you know, it, it better helps them in the long run and it better helps you to, you know, in production. Okay? Um, here's another, you know, uh, field winner, good time super chick. She was a nice, solid female. Um, I'm not going to say scatterbred, but, you know, it wasn't the direction I totally wanted to go in. It was actually female bred for John Monkman to thicken up uh, some of what he had. So, But nevertheless, so that's a whole other story. Look at this female's body, her, her legs, her, her spleen, uh, her gait. You know, this is how a dog is supposed to be built. And you could run her, you know, pretty much all day, you know. Uh, here's another example, and, and I'm going to rush through these because I don't want to hold you guys. I just trying to, I'm just trying to paint a picture. This is a male directly off of uh, our very own or uh, my very own uh, Windy Ridge Raven. She's uh, th this is Mr. Lewis Long holding her, uh, the establishmentarian of uh, Windy Ridge Kennels. Uh, this is a son of hers. He's not even two years old. Look at this male, okay? Close gait, um, nice hindquarters, long. He's got some some leg under him. Not the best of picture of this dog, but he's one heck of a nice, nicely built male uh, that can run all day. I mean, he's just he's just a solid, solid hound. See, when when you put them together like this, it's hard not to be able to keep uh, the rabbit on his feet. And then here's Windy Ridge Raven, you know. You see where I'm going with this. I'm not trying to self-promote. I just, I like what I like, and I, I, I like it to the point where I would promote it in such a way that it it fits, you know, in that example slot um, to, to, to put into perspective or to better place into perspective what it is that I'm trying to get across. 
when you start that job and they place you in that probationary period, I want to finish that out. It's a must that they give you the skills and it's a must that they give you what you need to ensure you, be, you, you can possibly become a worker, may, uh, get hired, hopefully full time, and carry out your due diligence as an employee for that corporation or company. So that, you know, because the only thing they care about is production. But if they don't put the right tools in your hand, they don't give you the right, you know, uh, material, guess what? You're not going to stay there long. I don't care how good of a worker you are, how well you catch on. You got to know what you, what it is that you, you know, supposed to be doing, and you have to fit the bill for that job description. If your resume and and, and if your mind to adjust and that having that chameleon uh, attitude to to adapt and to, and to camouflage and blend into your surroundings doesn't, you know, if that's not at the forefront of you. You know, it's not going to work. Now, here's Rufus' Showtime Hurricane, another perfect example as to what I'm talking about. Now, this is a pup. This is just a pup. He's not even 13 months yet. This is just a pup. He's a year old. Um, you know, very, very nicely put together male. Again, they've, you've got to have a dog in the working line of dogs. If you want to run all day, if you want a faster, headier, edgy hound you've got to give them the proper body frame to wield all that power here's another male i'll, I'll keep him anonymous as a buddy of mine down in arkansas uh his daddy i'm going to be using about over about three or four females that i've got but this is the kind of hound he's producing i mean just look at the leg look at the body this male in this picture is about seven and a half months old believe it or not he's a he's a baby here but this young man, uh, he might have been eight months old, but he was running the snot out of this dog. He had been started from about three months old, if I'm not mistaken. Just a solid, nice dog. But again, look at the body. And you know, when you place, um, when you place the right gears, when you place the right tire size, when you place the right chain, everything. Uh, underneath that hound, you know that working hound, it it shows. It sh it just shows. Now here's our here's let me go to this example. Here's Anderson Southern Pride, my very own. Right, I love this female. Oh my God, just piece of my heart. Blah 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 blah. I've told you so much about this dog over and over and over again. Right, okay. But what you don't know is she wasn't built for speed. Now some guys would look at her and say, Oh, she looks like she can fly. But I look at her and I look at her shoulders. I can really pick this dog apart, and 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 you know because she's she was mine and I bred her and I know all about her. But somebody would look at her and say, "Man, from the outside looking in, this dog looks like she's ready to fly." No, she's not. She's really not. She's built and looking at this picture, she's built in to me. She's built of a dog that can run about a maximum seven and a half. You know, solid, medium, fast. You know, maybe upper medium fast. And that's really what kind of style dog she was. But in, in turn, you know, she could run all day. She uh, can hunt and jump her own rabbit all day. She, she, she would do that, lay her life on the line all day. But it wasn't until the formula was tweaked that two generations later, boom, here comes this male, Anderson's Black Bart. Now, again, not self-promoting. I'm just giving you example, guys. I mean, you can slot your own male in there. Field champion Wilson Zizzo. You can slot in here. Hey, this dog, blah, 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 blah. Whoever you want. You know, just whoever. I don't care. But I'm just trying to give you, you know, I'm trying to put this into a place, this into a proper perspective so that you see what it is I'm talking about. You can, you can look at the different builds, dog to dog, and see what's there. But I want you to understand why it's there and the importance of it being there. It's so, so, so paramount that you have a proper confirmated hound, at least a working hound. Listen to me. I'm not talking about a show dog. A, comp, a, a dog that's going to physically get out there and put meat on the table. Now, if you're, if you're breeding just to have rabbit dogs, listen, guys, this is not for you. 
this isn't for you. I mean, don't get me wrong. If you want a different style of dog and you want to change up something, you want to figure out why it is your dog seems like they're fading, it could be, of course, it's not could be. It's one reason. It's one, either you're not running that dog enough and the dog's not in condition. But if that dog is conditioned and it still seems like it's fading, the, the heart is not there, okay? And the body frame possibly, possibly, possibly may not be there either, right? If the dog's got all the heart, the dog's got all the stamina, the dog's got all of this, but it seems like it just can't, you know, hold up after five or six hours. You really have to go to the drawing board and look at that dog's body. If you have a dog that's built like a basset hound and you run that dog like like nobody's business and it looks like the incredible, incredible Hulk basset hound, right? But it can't Hulk smash. The reason may be because the joints of that dog, the elements of that dog's physical structure may not be there to appropriately appropriately um, assist that dog in performing the duty before him or her, okay? Until you get, and I'm, I always say this, until you get uh, a, a strong line of females or a, a strong bitch line, you're not going to see the consistency in those working dogs confirmation wise that you're looking for because a male is not going to just throw and dominate every gene pool that you put him to you know he's just not going to do that there's very few males that did that and there's very few males that's ever going to do that but a good female line can help you overcome some of these boundaries majority of these boundaries and then you have to go into selection on those males but it's so paramount it's so 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 vital the longevity of everything you're doing that if you really want to stick with it and you want to have consistency i tell you what look at anybody that that and these are the guys that are, are big into competitions and, and, and look at the competition uh, to, com to compete look at guys that are winning and look at their dogs i'm not going to post all of them up there i got a thousand different pictures i could have posted i just selected what i had just to you know throw something out there's not because i'm so in love with these but just you know they were right there and i was like okay let me hear you do this and i'm on the road so you know whatever but go look at this the the um results in the michigan trials or another michigan hair association look at everywhere else you know uh the beagle boards facebook whatever they have out there now right i pay attention to one or two i don't really look at all of them but pay attention to whatever you want or go look at whatever you want make your own assessment and look at how those dogs are built if they're running large pack, look at how they're built. If they're running little pack, look at how they're built. If they're running SPO, look at how they're built. They're running, you know, UBGF, look at how they're built. And when you pay attention to that, better assess and look and say, okay, I, I'm getting what he's picking, what he's putting, what he's, uh, what he's trying to paint the picture of. I'm, 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 I'm seeing this now. I, I see it. Okay, I see it clearly now. And, and that's all I'm really wanting you guys to get at because so many guys I've talked to, and I'm, I'm really just putting out, this out there from, you know, the conversa many conversations I've had with different guys uh, in asking, you know, Tyson, why are you so big on the looks of a dog? Looks don't run a rabbit. They sure do. They sure do. Maybe not so much the color of a dog. It sure doesn't. But the confirmation of a dog, it sure does. And you have to pay attention to that. So, um, I, I, you know... <laughs> Go look at those things, guys. Pay attention to it. Pay attention to what yours, your dogs look like. Stand some of your dogs up. Take pictures of them. Get them up over their toes. Compare them to other dogs. Look at different lines and see, you know, and then go run with some of these guys, guys. Get in the car. If you want to be avid and really get serious about it, I mean, I'm, this is just to those that are really trying to get serious. Jump in the car. Put some miles on a little car, a truck, whatever. Uh, ride with someone. Whatever you can do. Carpool, you know, whatever. And go to some of these hunts, go to some of these guys' houses. You don't have to go into trials. You know, you can just go and, and, and pleasure run with people and that you, you know, you um, uh, deem their dogs to be a, a more proper, properly built uh, hound as the individual or maybe even as the pack or uh, as the whole, right, from the line that they're dealing with uh, or lines that they're dealing with. Go check them out and see for yourself and then stack them up to yours and see how yours stack up to them, they stack up to yours, and so forth. And then adjust. Don't be kennel blind. I'm going to say that again. Don't be kennel blind. If there's something out there that, and it's always a, it's a, there's always something out there, right, that can better what you have 
and add to what you do not have. Pay attention to that. And always, you know, you don't have to take it for what it's worth, but hear it for what it's worth. Always be open to betterment because that is the highest developmental tool by positive positive developmental tool that can help further that development than anything that's out there have an open mind so until next time Tyson Anderson Mr. Hammerdown we'll see ya when we see ya so I almost forgot guys um, if you're looking for a quality stock of dogs to get into that have this proper build, um, and you're looking for some of the old school international field champion, Taylor Socket to me, field champion, Rabbit Ridge, New York, Nick, field champion, Burst Lake, Texas T, um, get with me at your convenience. You can call me at area code 910-239-4508. Uh, 4508 again that number is going to be area code uh, 910-239-4508 that's a temporary number that I'm standing by right now uh, from where I'm at or where I'm at uh, due to where I'm at uh, working some of the hounds that I have or you can email me at andersonsbeagles2010 at gmail.com just like it sounds and I'll put all that in the description as well so thanks again guys make sure you tell somebody about the channel Tell somebody about the movement that we have going on, and I can only wait to better assist you guys. Take it easy.